all my holes that I drilled all around that edge and out there and across and nothing. They're all kind of in on this shallow or flat, like five feet deep, close to the open water where they're aerating the lakes, I think. This is the area, highly oxygenated. Probably has a lot of food because of the oxygen shallowness and yeah, close to these reed beds. I even hooked a damsel uh, nymph when I was jigging on my spoon. So that means there must be lots of food down there because I've never done that before. So I got a retie because I snagged my spoon on a tree under the ice there and lost it. So I set up the jigging jaw jacker. I'll put the camera on there and see what happens while I'm retying. brook trout he just came in and smoked that little jig I made inhaled it slightly bigger brookie but not much bigger than that last one they must stock fingerlings in here if that's the difference in age class this one hit me three times as might have seen. maybe there's some more around today they seem a little bit more aggressive still biting, biting pretty light but at least they're coming around and hitting multiple times, that's a good sign. Oh, there's a fish. I got him. Another brook trout. That one's a little bit longer and more slender. They're coming in and grabbing it. Inhaling that spoon, but where's the big ones? These are all little guys. Another one, I was just checking the camera. I felt the bite. This guy came in and gave it, ate it. Oh, got a water drop on the camera. Man, lots of little guys here. Are there bigger ones? But they're just coming in one after another, so that's a good sign. Maybe they're biting. Maybe there's some big ones gonna bite too. I'll have to move around and find where the big ones are. Another small brookie, man, they're all this size. Gonna have to change my location. To some place where there's some bigger ones. I thought this was a little bigger mark, but no, oh, same thing. Zach. There's a little bigger brookie. A little bigger. Still too small to keep, I'd say. There's a couple down there, I think. Let's see if he's still around. Yeah, he's, there's still another one there. Well, there's two there, three there. Oh, he bit, I missed him. I think they're just little guys. Whole bunch of them down there. Here he comes. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's another one. Rookies galore here, man, tons. There's still, I'm marking them down there still. Put my little piece, I got a little tiny piece of worm left. They don't seem to mind, they're hitting almost a bare hook. Get down there, catch another one. There we go. Now yeah, they're pretty fish. Very pretty fish. This one's got all kinds of nice colors, marks. Fast action here today. Nice sunny day. It's a little windy, but uh, beautiful. March the 3rd, I think. Like I said, I love fishing in March. It's so beautiful, nice and warm. There's another fish right there. Oh, got him. All similar one, two year olds. I want to see if there's big, there's got to be bigger ones in here. Unless it winter killed, they aerate this lake. So usually they survive, but they seem to love this spoon today. There must be lots of them down there. It's like, man, I've just been hauling them out of this hole. So 
Well, I've just been moving holes one to the other and uh, what I find is if one hole, hole cools off you just pop over to the next one bam 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 caught like four fish in this one right away and then they're kind of gone so I'll probably hop along I drilled a whole bunch of holes so I can just keep moving around and find where there's more fish there we go another brookie that one I just pulled it away from him. I could see two down there and he grabbed it. There's another one down there, so let's see if he comes and grabs it. All the same size, I'm wondering where the bigger ones are. Have to move. There we go, a little brookie. One after another at this lake, just tons of little brookies. little bigger one. I was just resetting the camera in this one bit. Oh. Missed that bite. See if he bites again. Here he comes. A little bit better ones. Still not huge. Ay ay ay. So wiggly. Crazy. It's following me up. Oh, there's two down there. Oh. Okay, there was two down there chasing. One followed up, one back down. The one that was chasing bit it on the way up. Oh, there he is again. Here he comes quick. No, no bait. Let's see if they bite with no bait. Yup, no bait. No bait, you hit with no bait. You know it's a good day when they're biting with no bait. But they're all little ones. There you go. Hit my little jig. The little tiny ones grab this jig. There's another one down there right now. Come on, hit it. There he grabbed it. Oh, he got off. See if he comes back and grabs it again. Oh, here he comes. He's got it. He's got it. Oh, there's another one. Right, right on me. There you go, got it one. Well, that's a bigger one. There we go. That's a nicer fish. That was on the jig I tied. On the jig I tied with no bait. Beautiful fish right there. Look at that, Brookie. Nice one. Look how he took that jig. Just came in and crushed it. Maybe there are some bigger ones around here. That's a beauty fish. Just in that little one 16 ounce hair jig a little bit of green and brown marabou and a couple of strands of crystal flash and some rubber legs. It looks like a nice little, uh, you know, dragonfly nymph. That one was higher up the bottom, about two or three feet off the bottom. He came up and grabbed it. Look at that fat football brookie. Gorgeous fish. Man, when I went to go get another battery, that eagle up in the tree almost came down and swooped and grabbed my brook trout. I didn't know he was watching me. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, they eat this little thing. It looks like a little dragonfly nymph. And that's what they're eating. A really sparsely tied jig. Looks really good, like one of those, one of those little nymphs they're eating. Oh, he keeps touching it. He's still down there. He's wondering what's happening. Why is this food running away? There's one. Okay, so I caught a whole lot of fish in this hole. Now it's slowed right down. I'm gonna move over to a different spot. So far, each hole I moved to has a good concentration of fish. Once it slows down, no use waiting around for the next bunch of fish to come through. Just pop over a ways and see if you can find another school. So 
So here are some underwater shots that I captured on my GoPro under the ice. As you see, a brook trout's coming in. This is the setup with the jaw jacker, a tungsten jig, and a small piece of worm. You can see the fish coming in with this new jigging jaw jacker. It's great for brook, brook trout because they sure like to see some motion and they're not so much into hitting a stationary bait. So as you see, the jaw jacker hit that uh, brook trout and caught that one. Now you notice as soon as the bait is gone, the fish are swimming away. Interestingly nice, right under the ice, you see a fish, uh, probably a rainbow trout just cruising and they do do that. So some days if you're not seeing anything on the bottom, Make sure you check that stuff right under the ice. So I just released that fish and you saw there he swam right into the bottom and you can see his tail wagging back and forth there sticking out of the mud and watch this. He takes off like a lightning bolt right out of the mud, disappears <laughs> into the darkness. Now switching it up a bit, this is a slender spoon and you see that flutter, lots of flash, really brings in the fish. Look how they come in and look how aggressive they are when they come into this presentation. Now usually when I'm using a slender spoon, I do big jigs and let it flutter until I see something on the markham. And as you see, I'll slow it down and do those little wiggles so that the treble hook is just flickering back and forth. And a lot of people in my previous video says I, say I move the spoon too much and the case is if I just hold the spoon steady, the fish will just swim away. And also it helps me feel the bite because watches all of these brookies bite the hook. They usually come up from below the spoon and they sort of lift the treble or the baited hook up. So it makes it very difficult to detect that bite unless you're actually moving the spoon. Now you saw I just got hit there and I actually had paused when he bit so I didn't feel the bite until I moved the spoon and it was too late he had already dropped the hook. Here's another one, brook trout coming in after this uh, hook. You can see I'm still jigging big because I haven't seen him on the sonar, I'm in shallow water. But I must have got a flicker of a fish there because I slowed down. But then I thought he was gone so I pulled the hook away. And how many times do we do that, pull a hook away from a fish that's down there? Here comes another one from the back. I always love how they kind of follow the trajectory of the spoon as they come into it up and down with their head. Watch, see how they come from below? And then you keep on wiggling the spoon so you can actually feel them bite and then you can get them like that. Let's see what happens here. Another brook trout coming in, spoon flickering away. And uh, did he just come in and disappear? Yeah, sometimes that happens. And I did catch a lot of fish and hook a lot of fish that day, so that might have been one of them. This is with the, uh, the jigging jaw jacker, tungsten jig. And as you see, same day, same time frame, look how the activity changes from a spoon to a small natural tungsten jig presentation. Look at this fish, like completely disinterested. That's why some days it pays to switch to a more aggressive presentation, get those fish more actively feeding, because this guy is just sitting here and takes off without much interest. Uh, so some days this, this type of rig kills them, other days not. So many brookies, all little guys though. There's another better brookie. That's another decent one on my jig again. Bite the spoon so light. Oh, came off. There's something there. Okay, it's really windy. Went to try a different lake quick. Uh, 
but I didn't mark anything. So I came back to where I was, where I was catching the brookies and uh, dropped down in my old holes and right away got a decent one and then I caught a big brookie. Check this out. And I'll keep on fishing. Got the camera now. Let's see what we catch under the snow here. Under the snow here. We got my book of brookies buried. Look at this. Look at this brookie here. Here's the first one. That's a beauty football right there. And then check out this one. Look at this brook trout. There is a pig. Look at that thing. That's oh, a monster. What a gorgeous fish. Let's try to catch another one. Little one. Check out that beautiful brook trout. Isn't that a gorgeous one? Must be around two pounds. So fat. Look how thick that thing is. And gorgeous fish right there. What a belly on him. Okay, let's see if we can't catch a few more. Look at the spots on that thing. Just a beautiful. 